Hello and welcome to Naval Horizons. I'm Samina Mondal, a public affairs intern for the U.S. Naval Research Laboratory, part of the Naval Research Enterprise. Today, I have the pleasure of being joined by Ms. Jocelyn Coleman, a computer scientist within the cybersecurity branch of the Systems Engineering, Acquisition, and Logistics Certification Division at the Marine Corps Systems Command in Quantico, Virginia. Thank you for joining us today, Jocelyn. Absolutely. Glad to be here. Thank you for having me. So, just to jump into your career, how exactly did you get your start in the Department of the Navy? Sure, so actually I'm a SMART uh, scholar. Um, so I was awarded the SMART Scholarship for Service um, Award. It's funded by the DOD. Um, and that SMART stands for the Science, Mathematics, and Research for Transformation um, Award. So uh, with that, it's basically just to um, have STEM students um, come to work within the DOD uh, workforce and really like a developmental program. And so that's how I got my start here um, uh, as a SMART scholar. And uh, my sponsoring facility being Marine Corps Systems Command, um, they took me in and I've been with them now for almost three years. It's incredible how time flies. I know. <laughs> oh my goodness. So you have a very interesting title, a computer scientist within the cybersecurity branch of systems engineering. So could you tell us a little bit more about your professional background? Sure, sure. So um, it first started um, in undergrad. Um, I graduated with an information systems management degree from Auburn University. Um, and then later I went on to obtain my master's in computer science. Um, so from there, um, now I'm a computer scientist <laughs> within Marine Corps Systems Command. But prior to that, I was a software test engineer um, for a contracting uh, company supporting NASA. Um, so and even before that, I was an IT consultant. So I've always been around the IT realm, right? Um, and uh, then while I was getting my master's, I was awarded the SMART Scholarship. And so now I am a computer scientist with the Marine Corps Systems Command. I work within the cybersecurity branch. So we deal a lot with cybersecurity matters, um, especially around risk management framework process. Um, and then also because I wear a few hats <laughs> in my role, um, I'm also on the administration and development team for a tool that we use um, within the assessment and authorization process or the RMF risk management framework process. Um, so that's kind of like a quick synopsis of kind of like the background and where I came from and where I am now. Incredible. So just dialing back on your academic career, did you decide on the SMART scholarship while you were in college or was that a decision you made afterwards? Sure. So for the SMART scholarship, that was while I was um, in college, well, in grad school, um, obtaining my master's. So I completed one year of my master's. It, again, my master's was a two-year process. Mm -hmm. <laughs> my first uh, year, I was a graduate research assistant. And then um, I applied for the um, SMART scholarship and I was awarded um, halfway through my master's. So they paid for my second uh, half of my master's program. So because I was awarded and on the SMART scholarship for one year, I had to pay back <laughs> and work within the DOD for a year. Um, and I just stayed on. I enjoy working for the DOD, more specifically for the Marine Corps Systems Command. Um, and so that's how the SMART scholarship kind of works. And so it's wonderful to see how the SMART scholarship almost sets you up for that professional career after. And I understand there's conferences that you're able to attend and all these different resources that you have in that network. Yeah, so there's actually like a SMART symposium that goes on um, every year. It's actually happening right now. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, and they have tons of like breakout rooms and you get to hear from different speakers, different people in the program, different sponsoring facilities. Um, it's really a, a good program that kind of sets you up um, to work within the DOD and, and really just anywhere within the, the workforce um, as a STEM uh, professional. But also um, that SMART program, I, it wasn't, unfortunately I didn't have this opportunity, but um, now um, if you are worth the SMART program, uh, the SMART scholarship and you have it for a year and a half or more, um, you actually get to intern with your sponsoring facility. So it kind of gives you that, you know, just a taste of that real world experience before you actually go and work for them um, after graduating. It gave you that foot in the door, which is wonderful. Absolutely. So we understand that you assist the Department of the Navy on the daily and it's in the support of assessments and authorizations for the applications of the U.S. Marine Corps and overall Navy. Mm -hmm. So how do you use STEM in your everyday job? Yeah, for sure. So, um, like I said earlier, we work within the risk management framework process for the authorization and assessment um, process. So, 
Um, I work under the um, SEA or the Security Controls Assessor. So we're really working with our information system security managers and officers and engineers to ensure that systems are secure. Um, different security controls are in place, um, making sure that when it gets out to our Marines, out to the, to the fleet, we are, our, our systems are totally locked down, their data is protected. Um, so really just working to make sure that things are, that we have cybersecurity in place. Um, we don't want, you know, any, any things getting to other people's hands that doesn't exactly. need to get to, right? Um, so that's kind of how it works within and how we we're supporting like with our Marines. And that really um, affects the Department of the Navy as a whole mm -hmm. because it's not just the Marines um, that use our systems. There's other, um, other services that use our, our, our systems as well. And so in relation to the specific science and technology topics that you work with, mm -hmm. what is its naval relevance? Sure, sure. So within cybersecurity, systems engineering, um, and the list kind of goes on. <laughs> um, so we're, we're providing these services to ultimately assist with our Marines that are you know in need of these mm -hmm. systems um, and not just the marines which also fall in the, with, within the department of the navy but um, the, the naval the naval service um, and other services as well so um, it really it, it really is kind of like a waterfall effect mm -hmm. if you will because um, we have many systems that we use as like from reciprocity from other services so we really just want to make sure they're protected at all costs so that we are truly covered uh, within the Marine Corps from a cybersecurity stamp, uh, standpoint, especially with this day and age right. where there's so many attacks you know, happening and we just wanna make sure we can mitigate any risks that may um, come about. Um, and we wanna just provide uh, support where we can within the whole Department of the Navy. Wonderful, and with that sense of security, I know even the term cybersecurity is tossed around and is such a hot buzzword. Yeah. Could you give us a little bit of a synopsis of how that science and technology within cyber affects your everyday career? Sure, sure. So our everyday career, one, we just we need to make sure our systems are secure, make sure they are safe, um, make sure that if there's any risk, any vulnerabilities we have out there, they are mitigated or essentially they are like patched up to make sure that they are safe for usage. Um, if you have anything that's extremely vulnerable or high risk, you don't want to risk it, uh, putting that out and to be used because then we can have people infiltrate in or, you know, use stuff that's not for their usage, right? So that's kind of like what we're working with every day. Mm -hmm. um, and we're trying to support the individuals who need to use these systems and we need to have them locked down so that they can use them safely. <laughs> um, and we don't need to have, you know, people getting into it into wrong hands because it affects those out in the fleet. Um, it affects uh, the Marines, the Navy, the Navy men. It affects everyone and then it ultimately affects you and I <laughs> um, because they're really the ones that are out there working and making sure we're safe. And we want to make sure they are safe with the systems and uh, equipment that they're using. And that's from systems, radios, um, different combat or communications, any and everything systems. We want to make sure those are safe and locked down. So from a cybersecurity standpoint, you just want to make sure things are safe and your risks are identified and mitigated. It's wonderful. And just thinking as simple as security when it comes to our computers or submarines that are out in the fleet. Yes. So thinking about the naval challenges that you have encountered through your work in cybersecurity, what are some specifics that come to mind that you've tackled? Sure, sure. So for me, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I some of the ones that we've encountered is having some of our systems that we've identified, they have a lot of vulnerabilities. Um, and so if we were to go ahead and just push it along and say, yep, that's good to go, <sighs> it would really set us up for, for failure. For example, we work with radios, right? Mm -hmm. um, we wanna make sure that the, any data that's transmitted in between radios and the usage of them, make sure that's protected so that that information or that specific data that's going back and forth is not um, shared with any ears outside of um, our Marines who are authorized to use them, right? Um, and so that's kind of the, the, where we're going with this, um, with what I work with. Um, because I specifically support those that are trying to get authorizations to operate within the fleet um, out there in the field. And so if they don't, if we don't mitigate those risks, if we don't go through these proper processes in place, um, they are not allowed the authorization. So that's kind of like the importance in it. So if you had to look back on your high school career, your college career, what would you tell young Jocelyn about your path through cybersecurity or computer science and maybe something you wish you would have heard? Oh, for sure, yes. Okay, so <laughs> I would definitely tell young Jocelyn to persevere. 
um, keep going. Um, it gets better. You will definitely find your way. Um, this isn't the end. <laughs> um, so when, once I got to college, I was actually a chemical engineering major. That's what I started out as. And um, we'll just say, for lack of better terms, I was dismissed <laughs> uh, for chem from chemical engineering. And I ended up you know, switching pathways, um, went into the College of Business Information Systems. I thought that was the end of the world. Mm -hmm. I thought I wasn't going to be a STEM professional. And here I am now, a computer scientist, um, and I work within the DOD. So I would just love to tell young Jocelyn or any young person who may feel like, ah, oh, STEM isn't for me, this isn't for me, I can't do it. Yes, you can, keep going. Um, and honestly, what the path that you thought was, look, was going to be for you may not be that path, but there's always something great that you're going to contribute to. And as a leader in Naval STEM, how would you say you wake up in the morning each day and feel enthusiastic about the work that you do? What drives you to want to accomplish such things or take part in cybersecurity and CS for the DoD? Oh, absolutely. Multiple things, uh, for sure. One, knowing that you are making a difference and providing um, your services to directly uh, benefit people that you see every day. Um, people that you're communicating with every day, um, and you're actually able to see like the the fruits of the labor that you put in um, to see some of these systems actually out, you know, see videos or see it live in person, like actually working. And you're like, oh, I pay, you know, I may have played maybe even the smallest <laughs> little detail, but I played a part in that. And now it's out going, thriving, and and really flourishing. Um, and even the the workforce themselves, um, I do do a bit of training uh, to the workforce, so to see some of the individuals that I provided assistance to or help with, to see them actually go out there and thriving and they're really playing a big part and they're making a difference within the DOD. That, that is what gets me going and has me waking up and I'm like, ah, let's go to work. Wonderful. <laughs> I love it. And it's so interesting to see because computer science is such a nuanced field and is one that many students in high school and college are majoring in or considering mm -hmm. to major in. So it's great to hear your account of how not everything is so linear when it comes to choosing a major or choosing your path. Correct. Yeah, it's, it's not. It's, um, and you can, the, the thing is, once you have a title in, in whatever you do, what you'll learn is that um, nine times out of ten or more than likely, you probably won't just be doing one thing. Right. You'll have multiple hats. And I think that is the best thing um, for me and my experience um, because, like I said, I work within like cybersecurity and the RMF process, but I'm also uh, more so on that computer science uh, side. Um, I'm on a developer uh, development team and an administration team for a tool that we use. Um, and I, I just and I, I do training, you know, providing education, right? <laughs> it's, it's multiple things that you can do. Um, and I think that's the beauty of it, too. It truly is. Mm -hmm. Now, to cop, cap off our conversation, Jocelyn, and it's very inspirational and yes. so admirable to see the ways that you've used computer science in your career. Is there anything else you'd like to leave our viewers today? Oh, yes, absolutely. Um, so I would definitely always say to the person, kind of like I mentioned earlier, to the person that feels like they can't do it or this isn't for them or they don't fit in, go for it, go for it, <laughs> do it. Um, I, I did not fit into the, what I thought was this mold I needed to be in. Um, I, I wear my hair as a big afro, right? I have bright fingernails all the time. <laughs> um, I, I don't fit into this mold that I thought as I was growing up that I thought an engineer or a STEM professional would be in. And here I am thriving and I'm like, Psh, I got this, right? And so just to any other person that, you know, women, right, or any type of underrepresented uh, entity or type of person, go for it. You got this, you can do it. And for anyone that may have struggled, you know, in the in the day, go for it. <laughs> it's all good. Um, STEM is, if you really love STEM, you can definitely fit in. Um, there are multiple avenues and multiple ways to get in. So definitely go for it. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jocelyn. I know that I'm leaving this conversation so inspired. <laughs> I can't wait to see how many countless students you're impacting with your story. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. And thank you all for watching at home. Be sure to check out past and future episodes on the Naval Horizons website. And until next time, I'm Samina Mondal.